recognizes the importance of hearing public comment at the discretion of the chair on items on the official agenda as well as other items not on the official agenda. And we ask that all questions and comments be directed to the chair and that all members uh, of the board and others act in a professional and courteous manner. Once recognized by the chair, all persons addressing the board shall state their name and address prior to speaking. Uh, it is the role of the chair to maintain order. Um, so I think we just have us here tonight and we have RMLD staff, so there's no public to invite up to speak. Um, we're gonna, Dave, are you going to be the secretary tonight? I volunteer. Okay. <laughs> and it mentions here that uh, Karen Herrick and Mark Doxer might be here from FinCom, but it appears not, so hopefully somebody is watching from home. This will be a brief uh, meeting. Uh, we'll officially uh, ask for public comment, but there are nobody, there's nobody here to offer such comment, I don't think. So. so with that, we just wanted to move on to the first item, um, which is, you know, it's, it's the intention of the board to schedule a, a, a special meeting that will be a board meeting, but also will provide information to the public about the topic of, of solar power and how to do um, sort of the larger scale deployments. And um, this is a topic that I get asked a lot, not a lot, I know my colleagues have been asked about this a lot, and people have different ideas, and, and there's some confusion out there about what can be done, and the programs are changing. Um, so I just thought it would, the idea came up from Colleen after we spoke about this at the last meeting that why don't we have a, you know, a workshop would be a good way to address this, have a, a board meeting that would be a, a short board meeting and then the, mo the bulk of the meeting would be devoted to having a workshop where the public could come in and then Chuck could explain, you know, what the programs are, what RMLD can do, what isn't possible and what some of the models are. Um, so that's the intention and we wanted to discuss tonight I don't know if Colleen, if you wanted to elaborate on yeah, that. Sure. Uh, um, I think what we were thinking of uh, is, you know, we haven't, they haven't, you haven't voted yet on a June date, but if it's going to be June 20th, uh, the cab may tack on the same date. Mm -hmm. uh, but possibly looking at a short, regular session, just minor business, and then getting into this workshop. Uh, we'd cover, uh, Chuck would cover, like, what is the existing community solar projects that we have? Uh, the changes in the state of Massachusetts economics on solar recs and how that's changed. Uh, he'd talk about some of the new concepts that him and his uh, division are working on for solar gardens. Uh, we'd talk about the RFP development and who's responsible for that, the owners or, or us, uh, the roof analysis, how that would occur. And then lastly, uh, like the purchasing laws, we have to make sure that that's um, and so that would be part of it. But we would want to make sure that the invitees included building owners and specifically for municipals like DPW or people that can make decisions about, you know, going up on the roofs and, and allowing us to do the analysis or working with vendors to do analysis. And to be clear, it's, there's, it's in, there'd be invitees, but it's open to the public. It would be a public Yeah, forum. but I'm, right, okay. that, so we but sure we want to target, right. That, okay. Um, so that's the high concept. and. and um, I don't know if Chuck, if you want to address this a little more, or we can wait and do this. Okay. Uh, Mr. Okay. Chair. Yes, Tom. Uh, so would it help? I don't know how much input we've gotten from the community, but, you know, workshop I think is a good vehicle, but, you know, sometimes people have questions that if they got served up, you know, so I, I guess what I'm suggesting is maybe a pre-advertisement which says workshop's coming. If you have questions, submit them to Chuck yeah. and Eva. That's so a good that yeah. <laughs> That way there gives a little time for the RMLD to look them over and uh, gets people thinking about it. That's an excellent idea. So we, so if you vote tonight to have the, the meeting on the 20th, uh, we can have Joyce write up something on that. We can put several uh, articles in the paper, yep. you know, like a series. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Phil. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Phil. No, traffic <laughs> is terrible. <laughs> yeah. All we did was vote on stuff, so we yeah. did. <laughs> <laughs> Reduce the size of the board to... <laughs> Down to four. That's aggressive. <laughs> now we just have to decide who's going to get voted off the island. <laughs> so, um, so sorry, sorry, Phil. But we, okay. did, we did start a little bit. We waited a bit. That's um, all right. You know, Patrick uh, is miserable. It's right, raining out. So, sorry. So, Tom had the idea. We were just discussing the first item on the agenda, Phil, which is to schedule this, um, you know, board meeting that would include a workshop yep. where members of the public could come in. Mm -hmm. and get an education from the department about current solar uh, policies and um, roles of RMLD, answer questions.
these new concepts, the new concepts and just walk everybody through it in one open meeting. Any other questions or comments? Would, yeah, it would be the other business that we normally cover in the board meeting, or would you say this would be just dedicated to this one topic? I think we would, if there's business to take care of, we do it quickly. Okay. And it would be a public meeting just like this. Maybe it would be in this room, and we'd, ha we'd take care of business and then move right into the... Okay, uh, sounds good. Keep that short. Yeah. I mean, I assume if you have purchasing recs to approve, you have to yes. do that. Yeah. But I just have a question, with Tom. So you're, you're saying if people have questions to ch so when if I put this in the paper saying this workshop's coming yeah I, I want me to the direct questions well, I'm just it, not necessarily but I thought it might be a good idea that m some people so sometimes people have a lot of questions but they don't make the workshop so you kind of lose that input uh, or okay. they may, may have com questions or comments or feedback I, I would assume it's always good to have some of that in advance because okay. then you can build it into your response but you may not get a lot I just thought that might be another way to all right well we'll, we'll write the article for the paper in such a way and put on the website that it yeah, yeah and I think just to um, add on to that to give people it's not one of you don't have to submit questions you can come here and present the question yeah, right. live as well it's right. a choice yes yeah yep. so perhaps I mean is there enough background material that we could put something up on the web in a separate folder that people could access and get a preview of about and we could solicit their questions um, through the internet as well as opposed to just coming here and having a very large number of questions the, I mean the more we we see or get feedback from them the yeah that I just feel idea. like if we if we present it all then no one will come you know what I mean yeah like it can happen yeah. so um, yeah I mean I like the idea of having the, uh, the questions beforehand so we get a sense of any areas of con confusion or concern um, that, but to having everybody in the same room at a public meeting, then the c everybody's hearing it simultaneously. Yeah. The questions are being heard by all. The answers are being heard by all. You know. Yeah, it would be good to get the public officials there, okay. building owners, the DPW people, you know, so that uh, like Dave says, everybody's hearing the same thing. Good point. Good point, Tom. I think. Uh, <coughs> I've been getting mail. You guys probably have too uh, on solar. So it sounds like there's, if I'm guessing, a lot of residents probably aren't sure what, you know, should I be looking at solar? You know, do I leave my house? You know, <laughs> is it going to save me money or am I missing out? Or, you know, how does this relate to what we're doing at RMID? So I think it's great timing. Okay. Yep. You know. I agree. And I, it comes in the context, I know the department's working very hard on a very comprehensive look at all of these solar and batteries and all kinds of policies to take advantage of and, and adapt to a new, a lot of changes that are coming, including electric cars. So I just want to thank Colleen and everybody for all the hard work that I know is going in um, right now. Yeah, it's, it's really complicated and a lot of good work is being done. Okay, Mr. Chair, just so you envision it as sort of like uh, a half hour information and, you know, presentation and then Q&A or how do you Yeah, I would think that's exactly <coughs> So did we want to decide that June 20th, we had discussed last time that June 20th would be the date of our June meeting. We already have a, a late May meeting scheduled. Normal time, 7.30 start yep. on yeah. June 20th. Is that a May. Thursday? Yeah. Yep. Checking. It's a Thursday. Take a yep. Look. That works for me. June 20th. Do you want to start at 7 and then do the business first? like? Yeah. yeah, why don't we do that? That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. We can schedule the workshop People at 7.30. People are coming in, they're not listening to, yeah, so yeah, right. 7.30 right. to 8.30 is the workshop. Yep. Okay. And in, in, in some emails about scheduling that had to do with whether people can come to the meeting, Phil, are you able to do that or no? Yeah, I should be okay with it. This okay. June the 20th. The, that's the 20th, okay. right? Yeah, because I know both yeah. you and John were on. We had a committee, a subcommittee at one point looking at yeah. solar, and it would be great to have everybody there. Do it as far as I know right now. Okay. Do we need to vote on this? Uh, no. We don't need to vote. No, no okay. vote. So we've scheduled it. Good. Thank you. Great. Um, and the second item on the, the next item was just to kind of 
given that we've been through the two years of discussion on the pilot payments, just to kind of get an update from Colleen and what's the plan this year for how we are addressing and moving forward. Okay, thanks. Uh, so we hired a third um, uh, independent party to take a look at the study that I had done, and they're updating it, um, and it's expected to be done late spring. Okay. And um, so when I get it, I'll uh, send it along to you without deliberation, but then I'll do a presentation to you guys the same way I did my uh, okay. study, mm -hmm. and then um, we take it from there. Okay. So that sounds like that would be late spring means a June 20th meeting by definition is the end of late spring. Right. So perhaps that first half hour we could have, that could be a topic for that, and then we can set and, and set a course for what we're doing. Yeah, I mean, we won't have enough time for yeah, going into all that, will we? Call call time yeah, that's time. That's pretty no, good. but it, just to schedule. Maybe an executive yeah, summary I, of I it. Scheduling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. scheduling. Okay, I see what you're saying. Are yeah. going to meet in July and August? Or yeah. I would think so, yeah. We don't yeah. usually have a board meeting in August. No, we, okay, so we usually have one in July. So we can do it. If, if we're getting it uh, in June, back in yep. June, we'd send it to you. You want some time to digest it. Right. So yeah. probably should make it the July meeting. Okay. Fine. Because that way, if you look at it and you're like, you know, I'd like you to get some more information in this or, mm -hmm. okay. you know, feedback back and forth, um, you know, that you can send me okay. individually. Yep. Uh, and then I can. Um, the qu only question I have is, is the document at that point a public document or is it, w at what stage does it become a public document? And maybe we can, I don't know if you have the answer right now, but. I think they're probably going to send a draft. And just make the, we get a draft and just make sure that they met all of the criteria of the scope. Yep. Uh, and once that's been determined, uh, then I say, yep, this looks like it's met the scope. Then they'll finalize it. And when they send it to me, um, you know, I mean, it becomes a public document, but I'm going to send it to you. I mean, yep. unless someone comes in and, and requests it, yep. it's, okay. it's coming to a public meeting. So. Okay, so it's, I would regard it when it comes to you, and, and after that acceptance process, it's, it's public at that time, so we don't want to wait too long oh, no. to Great. make it public. I'll send it right along That's to you. That's a good point. Um, thank you for that, and then at that point, we can be scheduling meetings and, and making clear like what our plan is for the rest of the year on moving forward and yeah, making Mr. everything. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, yeah, so to that point, maybe at that point we could, uh, I think it would help to have a high level of timeline. Yep. So when we ideally would like to come back to the town with what we plan to do yep. and then move backwards because otherwise it we can still be busy doing stuff but you know there yep. isn't kind of that goal post there to kind of agreed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. And to be clear about it, thank you, Tom. Okay, thank you. And then just as part of that, you know, the twenty year agreement comes up next year and wanted to just have a quick public discussion, Colleen, to update us on that and how, if at all, it overlaps with <coughs> the payment. Uh, yeah, it's uh, every 10 years, it, it continues for the next 10 years. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's 20 years, but it's every 10 years it renews itself. So I don't anticipate any changes. Um, I haven't gotten any feedback from Kathleen or the cab or anything, so I'm just assuming it's a regular 10-year uh, revolving Each of the towns has to vote in every 10 years. So there have to be votes every 10 years. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I don't know what this, what you've got a timetable, what's going on now at this point? Uh, Kathleen is setting it up right. But I, I'm, I'm not anticipating any changes, I think right. is what Bree is asking. But yeah, Kathleen's setting it up for. Um, right. I know we usually go to each of the four towns and mm -hmm. they make an appearance and let, just let them, you know. We do as a board All or the, or the no, manager no, does? I mean, I've, I've gone in the past to some when I was able to go. Yep. Being one of the architects of that agreement, I've always, exactly. you know. So what happened? How did it go? None of us were here 10 years ago except you. So I'll, yep. I'm, I'm going to, these five, it was only you. It's so just, what happened in the 10 years basically, ago? Basically, uh, Vinny and myself went to each of the, each of the, uh, the uh, boards. Yep. And just, you know, we presented, you know, and they voted at that point. Okay. At that point. So and there was no opposition in any of the, any of the, I mean, they, they get things in like, you know, we got a double pole here, you know, we got a double pole there, yep. you know. What can you do for us here and what can you do for us there at the meeting? Okay. But 
that's, you know, those are the kind of things. Right. It's just a matter of, of getting and, and making sure the votes are in the place. Okay. Tom? Yeah, so I had just a couple of questions. So <coughs> I, I assume that if, is, is there a time date uh, after which it automatically does rename? In other words, um, how do we determine when, when, they, when we go to the boards, but I mean, is there a, a time frame like during this 10th year? If, if they don't vote, that, that means they're pulling out. Yeah, but by what date? I mean, is it? I don't, I don't know that I had, I don't remember the That would be helpful. Exactly it seems like we need some information. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Tracy just gave me a copy of that and I can bring it with me. Okay. My other, time. so that's one question. I can send you the date. Yeah. Um, I think okay. most importantly is what's the, what's the, no, the deadline date? Exactly. Right. Uh, I assume the board here has to vote as well, or, or not. So, and then the third question, which is really, uh, so are we, is it a, a zero or one? In other words, we renew, we don't renew, or, you know, is it like any agreement, uh, gee, we'd like to amend clause 2.5A1. No, no, you, you, you don't renew, you cannot change the agreement. The agreement is you either agree that you're going to, you have a 10 year period either to withdraw from it. From it uh, so it's a zero one, either it's going to go right. on. That's or your, yeah. Right. So he's agreeing with that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. even zero if one. you uh, decide to withdraw, it could be a ta it takes 10 it's years. It's a 10 year yeah. period. It's a 10 year withdrawal period. Right. So that's the way the agreement works. You could, but that, that where we can wind down the power. The so power each of the power. other three towns do an up or down and vote. As does Reading. All and Reading does four towns. Each of the four board of the select boards, whatever they call themselves these days, yeah. has to vote has to vote on the agreement to to uh, continue it. And then it will stay in place for maybe for twenty years. Kathleen is okay. yeah. setting that up, so she'll write it up and write the dates and yeah. Yeah. contact the different boards and when we're going and okay. that she'll she'll provide the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, and um, so the last item was, I think, and again, thank you very much, uh, Chuck and Colleen. We've been working on, this is about electric vehicle charging. That is a very comprehensive program at RMLD for figuring out how to adapt the system to an expected you know, influx of electric cars and including what our rebate and incentive policies are. And, I, and one feature of it, I'll hand this to Colleen again, is being clear that although these chargers that you see in front of like shopping malls and in front of RMLD that cost tens of thousands of dollars potentially to put in, people can put in something simple, uh, whether you're a house or whether you're a business or a municipality, where for a few hundred dollars, a equivalent of a 240 volt circuit, dryer, a dryer type plug can become a car charger. And that the recent days, the department has, has, has amended the rebate program to explicitly make it clear to everybody that that type of charger is is covered. Is if I'm not misstating it, Colleen. Um, I'll let Chuck do it. Do you have the paperwork? So that it's not a big lift to start, uh, you know, having your company, your public agency, buy an electric car and be able to charge it is not a big lift. It does not require many thousands of dollars it can be done for a few hundred and that RMLD is there to help this happen for a lot of good reasons including low growth I may have misstated something and I will now be uh, just chastised told just, <laughs> just, just how badly I misstated it. Um, notice that I moved the mic even though it's probably not live <laughs> should be live uh, well the last time they told me the mic wasn't <laughs> Um, I have always been told that it is the height of injudicious yes. to amend or correct a yes. chairman's remarks <laughs> on that. <laughs> well, that, that's so why I will say would be the elaboration would be the word. That everything you said was bang on accurate. Except for every third word. <laughs> I have no amendments to that. Um, I would uh, like to note, as much as I appreciate getting kudos, uh, that I have a pretty phenomenal team yes. uh, behind me, yes. and uh, redoing this has gotten input yes. from a number of people that have been involved with uh, the EV program prior, prior to my arrival on the scene, right. 
uh, and have worked with existing customers uh, to develop things. So this is a collaborative effort. And uh, other than that, um, what we've done is uh, try to catch up a little bit with where uh, current metering capability uh, for these systems is, current protection and interlock capabilities, and under what circumstances we can install these without having um, protections from uh, inappropriate public access. Uh, when you put a, and I will call it a residential level charger, i.e. one without economic protections uh, in place, people can't just go up and start using it, uh, usually uh, those are in a residential garage or some other secured area. Yep. And those are not the kinds of chargers that we want generally uh, out in the field where people can just pull in and Correct. Uh, take advantage of the availability of the electricity uh, right, that way. So uh, we have highlighted where we think those would be appropriate and I think it's also fair to stay that as we develop this program and as we get experience working with customers, uh, some of these definitions and boundary conditions that we've put in place may evolve a little yep. bit and things shift and move. Um, but for the most part, we've got uh, an approach to putting uh, chargers out in the field yep. uh, for uh, our customers and the public at large, mm -hmm. people who commute here from other areas. Yep. Uh, we are looking at locations that we can put uh, chargers uh, in each of the communities so that this is a broad-based uh, application. Uh, we have uh, other opportunities that are outside the scope of uh, this program that we're also pursuing, so we haven't put a fence around this mm -hmm. and said, thus far and no farther. Um, I guess the point to make there is that uh, it's kind of dynamic, yep. and it is also a piece of what we are doing. Correct. Uh, we have developed a scope of work uh, to look at electric vehicles and how we incorporate those into our resource portfolio uh, going forward. We have engaged the services of a contractor to help move that along because we're a little resource constrained and we want those uh, or aspects uh, of those uh, up and running for the summer uh, marketing programs that are going on that are being coordinated with others. Yep. So. Colleen gave me the uh, sort of the overall parameters for that study, and if you would like, I'm glad to review those. And that's certainly your call. Yes, but there's one there's one kind of bottom line point that I just want to make sure gets communicated out to the public through us or through whoever is that if you are somebody, be you a company, a public agency, a town, a school district, that. It's, it, it can be if you have a if you have an area where you can charge a car that isn't publicly accessible for only a few hundred dollars you can charge a level a level two charger you can charge an electric car and get a incentive back from RMLD and it's not a big deal to do it and that's kind of the high level thing that I, when I again as I, I talk to people and hear from people and m my colleagues do there's a perception that oh there's no charging infrastructure oh this is a hugely expensive thing where you have to have these kiosks and it's it's, it's a planning and zoning issue, yes, it is for those types of things where you're paying and swiping, but if it's behind in an area where it's protected and it's your property or your garage, if it's a company or a town or whatever it might be, you can get up and running very quickly for a few hundred dollars by your existing circuits and equipment that you can buy off the shelf and for which you can get a rebate from RMLD. Is that? That is accurate. Okay. That's the piece that I'm not sure is widely understood um, with for no, it just because it's widely, and Karen's, thank you, Karen, for coming. Yeah, you can speak, by the way, if you, it would be great to have you come up, but you'd have to come up and sit in front of the microphone, otherwise nobody can hear you out there. It's fine, it's fine. Um, that's all. That was kind of the very high level. That is. Superficial idea that I wanted to get across. Uh, for those people that want to do fleet 
yep. EVs, whether it's school buses or other municipal vehicles or even somebody who runs a courier service. Yep. Uh, we also offer fleet management programs. We've incorporated that into what we're doing. Yep. And we have opportunities to put public access chargers where people can uh, pull in and charge. They are yeah. fee-based yeah. so that... Uh, yeah, we heard, and you described that at, at an earlier meeting, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So we think we've got uh, something for everyone you do. Uh, in what we're doing now. Okay. You do. And that's the part that I mean, we're just making sure everybody out there knows that. Yeah, um, at our last meeting, the company name came up, Volta Industries, Inc., mm -hmm. so I went out and did some research on it. It's a Delaware company headquartered out of San Francisco. They actually, on their charging stations, they actually sell advertising. Correct. As, as, and uh, a lot of them on the, on the West Coast, out of California, more out West. The, um, the one that I saw on the website is they're proposing to put one at the Natick Mall. Mm -hmm. So and that, that's a... a Looks like a very solid company there. It's obviously if it's a Delaware company, it's going to go public at some point. Is there, I'm sure that's what the goal is. So I I can it. speak to that. Um, we have had two meetings with them. We have another one scheduled for tomorrow. With that company. With that company, uh, we are looking at uh, bringing them in. They are very interested in uh, gaining. Uh, marketing access to high traffic areas and they are using EV charging which then goes close to entrances right outside handicap zones uh, as their access point. So they offer 110 volt level one charging and they offer and uh, they use advertising space to to sell that. Uh, our conversations with them have been uh, tell us what you need to be able to come into this area and we will look at what we can do to facilitate some of that uh, signage requirements that they have to meet, whatever. Uh, part of their program is that uh, the offer to a municipality in which they locate is that there are public service announcements that are included uh, on the boards there. So we are working to secure those, uh, put those in high visibility uh, places and then get them on uh, EV charging app maps so that people can find them. Um, are they only level ones? They only use level one chargers. So they're, they're kind of a trickle charger. Uh, they expect that people will use five to ten kilowatt hours. Uh, they're not trying to be an EV quick recharge location. Right. They're, that's their marketing tool. Part of the discussions with them may be whether they can incorporate a level two charger and whether wherever they locate them is interested in supporting a higher level of kilowatt hour purchase. So there's, th there's trade offs in, in the program as we go. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, just for everyone's edification, can you explain, Chuck, what the difference is between level one and level two? A level one charger is a standard 110 volt charger. It is called a trickle charger because it uh, runs the lowest recharge rate. Uh, it's about five kilowatt hours an hour. If you do a <coughs> level two charger, no, it's how long would it take volt. to charge a car at that level? Depends on how much you run it down. And then, and I'm not Maybe. trying to be confusing, yeah. but if you drive uh, a round trip 50 miles and you use 20 kilowatt hours, it would take four hours to recharge okay. the battery. Thanks. Um, okay. The a level one charger draws like 1,500 watts and, and adds about five miles. I have one in my house, and it, 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 it adds about five miles of range in an hour, a level one. And it draws about 1,500 watts, so it's one and a half kilowatt hours an hour. It's like a hair dryer. It's like a hair dryer. A level two charger is about four times that. It's a 240 volt circuit, and the ones that, w at whatever the amps are, is 6,000 watts that it's pulling, and it'll add about 20 to 25 miles of range in an hour. So, and that's the one that's going to help load growth. If, if you're running into this, the mall, and all you have is the level one, and you're in there for half an hour, you're going to get like next to nothing. You're going to get like two miles of extra range on your car. 
You have to leave it there for hours. And RMLD yeah. doesn't get much. Not, I mean, not really. Right. The level two is, is where the consumer, if they're going into a store and they're in there for an hour, then it's noticeable. You know, you get 20 miles of range out of it. But the level ones is what I have in my garage, and it's a 10-hour thing overnight to get, to get, you know, 50 miles of range at it. And it's kind of a – so I'm just saying the, the level twos are kind of the sweet spot. The, the, the superchargers that you hear about that charge in 30 minutes, are they almo they're almost non-existent. There's a handful of them. There's one at the Nissan dealer in Woburn, and that's it. You know, like the, the level three. Tesla dealers, too. Tesla dealers, yeah. And it's called the supercharger, and those are like DC. You know, if you touch it, it'll, you know, it'll explode. <laughs> if you, I mean, that's I'm just saying, good. if you a short circuit for that, it's, it, looks like a, it looks like a mailbox, and it's, it's this humongous plug. But there's only like – there's only a handful of those in the whole region. So really, level twos are the ones that, if it's around in the public uh, spaces, is the ones that really helps the electric car driver get some noticeable charge in, in a time that you're in a supermarket. And it's also the ones that would help us with load growth, because it's pulling 6,000 watts at a time, not 1,500. So this is a great model. I just think that the level twos are, are better. The level twos are better. Yeah. Our program, where we're paying for the charging heads or making a contribution uh, to the cost of the charging heads, is specified as level two and above 13 amps draw. Yeah. So. Where we're giving money back. Yeah. Correct. We're not uh, giving money to level ones. When we look at the Volta system, yep. we're not making a contribution to the cost Correct. of the chargers. It's free. It's free. It's creating awareness. Yep. And from my perspective, uh, the benefit that we get from that yep. is building a supporting infrastructure for EVs coming in, Agreed. not necessarily building huge kilowatt hour Correct. Uh, charging. Correct. That's, mm -hmm. a, that's a good point. And the, the, the only thing I would add to that, though, is that faced with a situation where you have a couple spots that a, a given retailer is willing to devote to this, and you have one shot at it, the level two is what, you know, we wouldn't want to have it just be a level one for a decade when we could have had a level two in there. Yep. So and the but difference would very likely be that we would need to put in a uh, head that yep. would take a Visa or charge card so that uh, people who are using those charging stations are paying us yes. for the kilowatt hours. The way the Volta system works is it is behind the customer meter, so the shopping center or paying wherever the these are located yeah. are paying the additional cost They're of that. For it. So the, there are trade-offs in exactly. all of the steps that we take. And to your point, that means the customer who's pulling into the shopping mall, your thing, this is Volta thing's free. They're getting free. It's not much, but it's free, which is great. The other one, they're getting a good amount, but they're probably going to have to pay. Although in some cases it's free. Like the, the shopping malls do put in some of these level twos and it's free. Like Whole Foods up in Linfield, it's level two. If you can get it, it's free. And Whole Foods is one of Volta's uh, partners in, this in implementing a, this. This one's a charge point, and it's a level two. Yeah. Um, the one in Linfield, so I don't know what else is going the, on. The other benefit is that if we can put out a number of these units, then um, we can go into other locations yep. that wouldn't qualify for this. Yep. Uh, a couple of the ideas on the table right now are skating rinks and golf courses yep. where, you know, so right near the club them. drop, uh, you put a couple of these units. Yep. That's and a great one because they're there for a few hours. They're there for a few hours. Yeah. They're going to recharge. Um, yep. But it, it allows us to put them there instead of having to make a choice to put them someplace else. Exactly. So we get a lot more bang for our buck yes. in terms of trying to get the program going. And exactly. you're right. Over time, we don't need to stick with a level one. Yeah. Well, that's all great. I'm sorry. A Dave. Quick question. Uh, uh, the level two, if uh, it sounds like the, <coughs> most cases won't be free for most people. It'd be a charging station. Yeah. How much to, to would it cost for an hour of charging, ballpark it, at level two? Level two. On somebody's um, credit card. The the easiest way to explain that is that we calculated uh, a parking fee if somebody is using that space and not charging. Yep. Vehicles charge at different rates, but we figure it's about $2 an hour 
uh, to have that space sitting there. And that's the, the price that we have designed into a, a program of somebody sitting in that space past their charging window plus a grace period, mm. we then will charge them uh, $2. But the electricity is only 2 bucks for an hour of charging? Well, it's not just the electricity. Okay. It's also the cost of the head, the wiring. Yeah. Um, and then... Possible depreciation yeah. and everything. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I just wanted to... Uh, this program that Chuck is talking about, yep. there's a number of elements that go into it, and I don't want anybody to misunderstand that you know, we currently have residential and commercial EV rebates that are on the website. Correct. Okay? But the program, we're looking at those in more detail, but we have a comprehensive program. I just want to run through the list real quick. Please. So that you understand what we're studying, and this is why it's going to take until probably early summer yeah. uh, to come up with it. All right? Um, so develop the charging station infrastructure, residential, commercial. Uh, all four towns, non-carbon resource offset acquisition, EV customer database, number of vehicles, average uses, that's the analytics like with maybe Sagewell, marketing, vendor support activities, North Shore cooperative activities, informational campaigns, and EV fleet opportunities. So we would build a foundation yep. of what, you know, off-peak load management like with the buses and stuff, <laughs> rates and credits, tracking EV technology developments, planning and zoning coordination with the towns. That's like pre-construction and planning board um, uh, funding options, mass grants, uh, Reggie money, VW funding, rebate programs, monitoring and tracking uh, program capabilities, establishing goals, objectives, integrated programs into forecasts and budgets. So those are the components of the program, and we're studying each one of them. So right. it's um, so it's all fabulous, and you know the every everybody right now has wiring in their buildings and, and many of the circuits are 240 volt and the only point I wanted to come back to is that right now you have that infrastructure in your building, in your company, in your town, in your school and a very for a few hundred dollars you can put a <coughs> charger in and be charging a level two uh, right now and can you just Chuck what is the rebate that an entity could get for such a thing in a protected setting where the public can't really get at it or what, I believe it's if we're looking at what we typically call a residential charger, that is without ex access protections, um, the model chargers that we're looking at are about $750 a piece, and we're looking at covering the cost with yep. those. And we, uh, you know, you can look online, and, that, and that's roughly or even less what you, what it costs to buy one of these. Plug it into a dryer outlet, you're good to go. And whether it's residential or another type of entity. And to qualify for the rebate, yep. just to be clear. It's not just a level two charger, yep. but it's a level two charger with network capability, okay. i.e. we can take a look at the charging history yep. uh, at that location. Yep, very important. Thank you for that clarification. <coughs> That's all. Just wanted to make sure the public knew that we're helping everybody out in every kind of context and you can be up and running very quickly for short money and RMLD is there for you. And thank you, Colleen. Sure. Chuck. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so, Chuck, I didn't. Uh, part of this might be the scope of what Colleen just read, but uh, any sense of, uh, you know, say, the four towns together, how many uh, electric vehicles there are out there? Do we have any intel on that? Right now, what we have is not uh, guaranteed accurate, yep. but uh, the information that we possess tells us we may be in the range of 200 to 250 EVs currently in the service territory. Across that all doesn't include how many people travel to work to Wilmington or, um, you know, there might be people, people that come to our territory. We do know that we have uh, 14 charging stations um, at Analog, and those charging stations are generally full. Uh, I don't know whether the vehicle owners at those charging stations, using those charging stations, travel uh, within our service territory to work or are coming from outside the service territory. That's a big population for one look at one company location. And they have more uh, in their uh, development plans. Yeah. Good. Great. Thank you very much. Yep. Excellent. Excellent.
Oh, and one final question. How, how's our charger being used here? Do we have any statistics? Any data on the charger here? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the data question. Data on the charger. We have a charger outside, right? We have a couple of chargers outside. Uh, I do not have the data on those myself. Uh, I don't know how frequently we collect those, but I can find out. Thank you. Can I, have yeah. I, I can't hear anything. So, I mean, can I ask you to talk to Paul McGonigal about when we have meetings that maybe we can shut off the... Because I can't hear Chuck. I, it's probably going through the speaker and onto RCTV, but... I can't hear anything. Is it because of the AC? Or yeah. yeah. I'm We're just probably going to need that a little bit more, though, during the summer. What? We're going to need that a little bit more during the summer. Yeah, we can just sweat. We can change the dress <laughs> code. <laughs> we do that. Change the dress well, code. We can change and have Chuck <laughs> over here. And That's a first for me. <laughs> um, when I was a swimming official, my voice boomed across 50-meter pools. They heard me at both ends. Mm -hmm. So... <clears throat> I think that um, that concludes the, this topic. Um, Karen, you had a qu the Karen Herrick is here from FinCom. Did you have a question? You said something earlier, and if you did, you could come up. If not, I don't want to put you on the spot. Karen. Okay. Do you want to come up and um, ask your question? And just ID, ID yourself, and I guess you were. I did. Is that mic on there? Yeah, it is. Yeah. And just identify yourself and, and ask your question. And this is this is the expanded public comment period for people who weren't here at the beginning. Um, thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay. Um, I'm Karen Herrick. I'm a resident of Reading, and I'm a liaison from the Finance Committee. And um, um, I was under the impression – I'm actually not going to – expect an answer tonight but I've been doing some research on green communities and in um, I had a conversation with our northern area rep from the MAPC um, municipal area planning committee um, so there's some unique things about municipal light departments you guys all know but what um, he did say is that currently our state legislatures are talking about some how to make it easier for municipal light departments to get involved be members and um, I didn't know whether that might be something that you all would want to follow up with say Jason Luce or whomever or would that be something that the Reading Select Board should follow if they're having a conversation I guess we, you know if we wanted to we, we're already involved like looking into that uh, Chuck if you want to give a brief update like we did last it happens that the executive director of Green Communities uh, lives in Linfield. And I have already had, I think, two conversations with him. Uh, there is an opportunity in the statute where if we have a ratepayer within our service territory who is taking service from an investor-owned utility instead of us, we can work with green communities. We have not paid into the green communities fund. We've had our own fund and we've run our, our own programs. And it's ultimately the towns themselves that would need to participate. But our discussions have been how we can do some joint ventures with green communities to get access to uh, regional greenhouse gas initiative, REGI funds and the Volkswagen uh, settlement funds. Mm. Uh, so we are working with them to do that. We have to make sure that what we do with the municipalities in our service territory uh, doesn't conflict with other things that we're trying to do. So as long as we can meet what green communities' objectives are and what some of our objectives are, uh, then uh, we're open and actively working to uh, a joint relationship. Okay, thank you. That is, um, that's pretty much what the rep said. Um, Merrimack recently joined Green Communities because they were able to locate the rate payer of National Grid. Um, um, it's just that, that little extra thing that he said, hey, 
at the legislature. They're talking about other, if he used the word loophole. I don't like the way it sounds, but he phrased it as a loophole. So he said they're talking about other loopholes, but for the future. I used statutory yeah, uh, okay. Okay. construction really as opposed to <laughs> loophole. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we, uh, that is what we're working on, and uh, I have been in conversation and continue to do so. Do you need any support from the member communities for the legislatures? Let us, uh, legislators? At this point, I don't think so. Uh, what we're going to have to do is take uh, some of the ideas, and it may be some uh, get started kinds of projects uh, to each of the communities. And then each community is going to need to make its own decision. Mm -hmm. We can't speak comprehensively for all four communities. I know that Linfield is extremely interested uh, in that package. Um, I believe that North Reading has expressed uh, some interest in that. Um, I have to go back to the other communities and find out uh, exactly where they stand, but uh, we would take what we want to do with them as a program to each community and they can say yes or no uh, to that. Um, <coughs> sorry. There's a little I, line I just item. Wanted, just a quick point of order. Like, sorry. I'm sorry. happy to have the conversation sorry. go on. It's from a formal perspective, it doesn't really matter sorry. tonight. Questions go to the chair, and then we go from there. So it, do you have any more questions or comments? Um, no, I don't. Okay. Thank you. That's fine. Thank you. Um, and then I just I had a question for you, and then feel free to follow up, but do it through the chair. Um, Thank you. I'm sorry. I just have to <laughs> um, <laughs> Chuck, a quick question for you on this. What is it that the town select boards ne would need to do. Did you check with the chair on that question before you put <laughs> <laughs> this? Just, we just have to... I have not explored that with green communities. Yep. Um, that is a relationship between green communities and each of the, the towns themselves. I do know that we are relatively unique in that we serve outside of our own town's uh, political boundaries and jurisdictions. So in the other uh, municipal light plant service territories, they are pretty contiguous uh, between the municipal light plant and the municipality. Yep. So coordination is much easier for them. Um, but what you're asking is, a, is something that green communities would have to go to each town with, and uh, I assume that we would be available uh, to uh, participate in those discussions and, and talk about uh, how that works from our perspective. Dave, can I add a comment? And I, and I said this last time, I just want to reiterate this. Um, we do not pay into this. Right. Okay, and if we have one customer that's a National Grid or Eversource, it does come under the loophole. Chuck mentioned that there's some Reggie funds and things like that that are in there that did come from municipal funding. This is why we want to be careful when we're evaluating what partnerships or collaborations we can do with them. We don't want to get into a membership that is forever and we're already collecting uh, you know, certain energy conservation fees in our rate and then have them come back and say, well, if the IOUs are paying in this percent, we want the municipals now to pay in. Right. I have Understood. to make sure that I understand what we're doing yep. clearly before we go <coughs> forward. Thank you so, for that. So, um, and yeah, because like in in Linfield, the 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 mayor was in in Melrose, so they had an IOU, and it was it was very good for the town in order to get green community funding. But yep. now we're in kind of a um, a little bit of a different scenario, and I just want to make sure that I, I look out for the ratepayers if Agreed. we were to sign up for a membership. Does that make sense? The, yep. The only question, a remaining question then, Chuck, um, would be, is there or isn't there something that the towns as their select boards need to do to avail themselves of something in this area? I don't know the answer to that Fine. tonight. That's something that's going to come out of the discussions that we have. And once we come up with a program or a project uh, where it would be a combined and mutually 
uh, beneficial activity with green communities, uh, we would then take that to each of the individual uh, towns and uh, work from there. Thank you. And if, please, if you have another question or comment, please. No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're all set? Okay. Thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. I think we're good. Yep. Uh, any other discussion? Yeah, I had a quick. Um, so this year is 125 years. Yes. Yes. And uh, May Bill's been here for Bill all of them, I think. Years. <laughs> years. And um, so it's actually May 21st. Yep. So I sent you uh, um, a link today. Uh, Joyce put together this very cool video. Uh, so if you give me some feedback on that, um, we've, we've changed our logo. So take a look at that. Uh, so what I'm proposing in order to, you know, not spend money and try to consolidate what we do, uh, even though it's in May. Uh, the first week of October is National Public Power Week, and we usually do an open house and, and things like that. So what I would be suggesting is possibly on October 10th, that Thursday, that after we're done with the open house, maybe we have a little reception, uh, and then we do the board meeting. So everyone's okay. kind of here, and we can invite the um, public officials mm -hmm. uh, to come and, and um, you know, do a little celebration, but to keep it, okay. you know, you know, within the cost that we're really already spending on, on the open house, and mm -hmm. um, and we're also going to have some ads from 1929. You'll see one of them in the video, but there's a whole stack of them that we've gone through, and she's going to put those on the website. They're really cute. Um, so let me give me <laughs> feedback if you want. Just email me directly, uh, but otherwise, she's going to post up the video and everything. For to celebrate, you know, to commemorate one, uh, one twenty-five on the twenty-first of May. Yeah, thank you. Great, nice. Thank you, Colleen. Thank you. Anybody else? No. Okay. So we uh, move to adjourn. Are we all set? Move to adjourn. Yeah. yeah. Second, second. Okay. All in favor? Move. Aye. 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 We've adjourned the meeting. Thank you, all everybody, right. for coming. Okay.